And welcome again to the My Guru Online GMAT Classroom. Today we're going to take a look at a sentence correction and talk about why we read the sentence up front rather than going straight to the answer choices. First, as always, we're going to go ahead and set up our scratch pad, just the question number, answer choices A, B, C, D, E for process of elimination sake, along with a line for where we can put the error that we may identify up front. Now, as we look at the choices, it may jump out to you that we have a relatively obvious two, three split here in that we've got that four as one option in choices A, B, and C. And then we've also got just a straight four in choices D and E. Now, this can be difficult for most people to evaluate whether we should be dealing with a that or just a straight four. It's an idiom error. They tend to be difficult. So you want to leave obvious and tough idiom errors for your final evaluation because that way you don't get caught up in whether or not an idiom issue is at hand. Instead, look for other things that are gonna be easier to evaluate. So if we read the sentence in its entirety, we get new data from the United States Forest Service ecologists show that for every dollar spent on controlled small-scale burning, forest thinning, and the training of fire management personnel, it saves $7 that would not be spent on having to extinguish big fires. Now, there's one simple word in there that I can immediately identify as ambiguous, and it's going to be this little it here right before saves. So this it is a clearly ambiguous pronoun and a much easier item to evaluate. So we're just gonna go ahead and label this out as a pronoun issue, and that allows us to eliminate A, and then we just go look for other pronouns that may be ambiguous throughout the answer choices. So we've got, Choice B, that for every dollar spent on controlled small-scale burning, forest thinning, and the training of fire management personnel, $7 are saved. That would have been spent on extinguishing. No pronouns there. That's okay. That for every dollar spent on controlled small-scale burning, forest thinning, and the training of fire management personnel, save $7 on not having to extinguish. Well, the pronoun's not wrong, so we'll hold on to that for now. D, for every dollar spent on controlled small-scale burning, forest thinning, and the training of fire management personnel, that it saves, oh, there's that it again, so D goes away. Then with E, for every dollar spent on controlled small-scale burning, forest thinning, and the training of fire management personnel, that $7 are saved, that would not have been spent on extinguishing. Well, in this case, that actually functions to a degree as a pronoun. And it's saying that specifically it's some that $7 but that are going to be saved, which just contextually makes no sense and creates another incorrect pronoun. Remember, you want to eliminate based on a category of error rather than uh, just the individual word that you may have found as incorrect up front. Between choices B and C, we change the verb. We've got are saved versus saves. And we want to know whether we should be in the present tense or the past tense. In the rest of the sentence, we can see that the dollar spent on controlled small-scale burning, and that's still the same in choice C as well, would be something that's happened in the past. So choice C is out for a tense issue. And we then reread choice B, and we see that New data from United States Forest Service ecologists show that for every dollar spent on controlled small-scale burning, forest thinning, and the training of fire management personnel, $7 are saved that would have been spent on extinguishing big fires, and everything makes logical sense there. You capture the intended meaning, and we see that one of the bigger issues here is always evaluate easier errors not just the obvious ones.